you can't stand by and see your country being taken away. You can't, I mean, I guess you can, but you're going to lose your freedom. Isn't it bizarre that the Biden administration is so hyper focused on countries like Hungary and Prime Minister Viktor Orban uh, just targeting him over and over again, uh, even though what he's doing in his country is what we should be doing here in ours to a large extent. It's so crazy. Should Hungary, could Hungary be a model for U.S. patriots here in the United States? I think so. I was there last year at CPAC Hungary, and I had an opportunity to meet and speak with Viktor Orban. I thought he was a brilliant man. I think he is a brilliant man. He survived communism. He understands what that is. And he has been very adamant that what is happening in the United States was what he witnessed. What's happening right now, folks, all this crazy woke ideology, what we're seeing happening in our universities, what we're seeing across the board in our country, both on a national level, and I would say a subversive, sneaky, crazy level that props its ugly head up like a virus at our universities, especially after what we saw happen on October 7th in Israel. And we see this rise of anti-Semitism, and we see these universities like going, hey, okay, well, as long as we, you know, talk about genocide this way, like Harvard just said, then maybe that's okay. What? What? No, it is not okay. It is not okay. And what we're teaching our children is not okay. And indoctrinating our kids in the breakdown of the uh, family structure and removing our children from faith base is not okay. And it is not okay to make the government the end all be all parent of our nation. The government should not have the last word. The government can't even run like the Veterans Administration appropriately. There is problems all across the board when it comes to bureaucracy. I have somebody very special on the show with me today. It's Dr. Shay Farrell. And she was with me in Hungary. I spent such an amazing time there. I was able to see life through, you know, through the eyes of the Hungarian people, um, being in Budapest was such a, a wonderful experience. I, I never felt afraid. I was never worried that I was going to be mugged or beaten in the middle of the city uh, for my stuff. Like, never. I never felt that. Um, it was wonderful just spending time there and talking to Hungarians and, and seeing life through their eyes. And also, like I said, having time to speak with Prime Minister Viktor Orban. And it was quite an eye opener for me to realize that much like, you know, President Trump was targeted by the by the leftists, these radical leftists, uh, they did the same thing. And the EU, by the way, is doing the same thing to Viktor Orban, to Viktor Orban. And I, I got to tell you, I loved what the prime minister had to say recently. Um, he said, Hungary needs to change the European Union, not leave it. He feels like, you know, I'm not going anywhere. You guys are the ones with the problem. You guys, you all are facing a crisis that has never been witnessed before in Europe, from the flood of immigration to the economic breakdown to uh, the internal struggle for sovereignty and identity. He said, it's not us that has the problem. It's you that has the problem. Let me read this part to you. I think it's pretty amazing. Orban. Uh, reiterated, he told um, the Congress of his Fidesz party on Saturday that the European Union needs to be changed rather than ditched. Orban again reiterated his government's opposition to starting talks with Ukraine about its ascension to the EU. He said, correcting the mistaken promise by Brussels to start talks with Ukraine about the EU membership will also be our task as Ukraine is light years away from the EU now, said Orban, adding that he would fight off attempts by the EU to settle migrants in Hungary. Orban 
who has been locked in a dispute with Brussels over the EU funds frozen because of his democratic, they say backsliding here in Reuters. You can already hear quote unquote how they're targeting him. Look, Viktor Orban does not want the EU's pressure on his country to teach children in the schools about, you know, this extensive transgender um, woke ideology. He just says, no, the parents of Hungary have a right to determine the education of their children. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like you? Does that sound like, hey, it's up to us as parents. We don't want these books, you know, these over-sexualized books in our children's schools. We don't need anybody telling us how to raise our kids. Our children should be able to go to church and come home and have parents that teach them the moral principles that the parents abide by and live by. It should not be the state. That is Viktor Orban. And I'm going to tell you right now, our nation is sliding away from all of that. I spoke with him. He saw it. He sees it right now in America. We have given up our sovereignty. We had just this week alone in the Tucson sector. I mean, my gosh, a flood of migration of, by the way, mostly single males coming through our border over 17,000 We've seen this over and over again under the Biden administration. We're watching what is happening in our schools from MIT to Harvard to elementary schools to middle schools to high schools. A growing anti-Semitism, anti-Israel, anti-American sentiment. And we are the frog slowly boiling, folks. I've said that before, and I absolutely mean it. And I'm going to explain to you why we have to be concerned, why we as Americans have to take heed from those that lived under these socialist, extremist, fascist regimes, and why we need to wake up. And to answer that question and so much more, I have my friend, Dr. Shea Bradley Farrell on the show today, and I know you're going to love our conversation. But first, let's talk about Super Beats because I couldn't have this amazing podcast and all these amazing guests without the amazing products, right? And Super Beats is one of them and we could all benefit from heart healthy energy. Super Beats heart shoes are easy and convenient way to support healthy blood pressure. They're plant-based and stimulant-free, so you get a green boost without the jitters. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. And how do I know this? Well, because I carry my Super Beats with me everywhere I go, when I'm on a trip, when I'm traveling. It's how I stay healthy. And believe me, I come close to catching the flu and I beat it off within like six to eight hours. Why? Because I take Super Beats and that's so important and my vitamins and I get the rest that I need. They are so easy to add to your routine no pills to swallow, no ingredients to mix or prepare. You just take them. They're like a candy. They taste so good. Double your potential with Super Beats Heart Shoes. Get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats Heart Shoes and a free full-size bag of turmeric chews valued at $25 by going to americalovesbeats.com. Get this exclusive offer only at americalovesbeats.com. Dot com. I am happy to have you on the show, Dr. Shea Bradley Farrell. You are not only somebody who I highly respect and had an opportunity to spend time with in Hungary, and you're married to a good friend of mine as well, Chris Farrell uh, from Judicial Watch, but you are like a leader, a leader in the fight against this new woke ideology. So I'm so grateful to have you on the Sarah Carter show for the first time. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. It is such a privilege to get to come on the show. Um, You and I met in May in Hungary. 
which right. is very cool. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, actually, I forgot this for a second. You interviewed me at CPAC Hungary. And uh, when I heard that you were doing that, I thought I had like just, you know, come up about 10 levels. I was oh, very please. excited. And, <laughs> and Chris speaks so highly of you and everything that he said plus more was true when I met you. You're a lovely Aww. person. So thanks oh, for having thank me. You. Thank you so much. It's no, it's great to have you on the show. You're the president of the Counterpoint Institute, a senior fellow at the Center uh, for Fundamental Rights in Hungary. And now, of course, you're the author of a new book, The Last Warning to the West, Hungary's Triumph Over Communism and the Woke Agenda. That's Last Warning to the West, Hungary's Triumph Over Communism and the Woke Agenda. And I got to tell you, um, Shay, when I first saw that, I was, I was like, this is, this is the exact book that we need in this day and age, because I feel like as though, I mean, we keep saying it, that we feel like we're in an upside down universe. I know everybody who I talk to Mm -hmm. moms, dads, regular folks, people in Hungary, um, it feels like everything is going in reverse and I'm actually Mm -hmm. terrified of the direction that our nation has gone in. And we'll talk about those different areas, but what drove Me you, too. what drove you to write this book? Like, was there a particular moment? Yeah, I think so. I think it was, I'll expand a little bit on what you just said, because I think that's what it was. Uh, Hungary reminds me of the U.S. in the 1980s, when we still had a little bit of common sense about what was going on. We weren't pushing our children to surgically transition to another uh, sex, et cetera, et cetera, opening our borders to fentanyl that's killing our people at record levels, just for a couple of examples. But, you know, I knew in my heart over the past 10 years, since Obama, for for sure, um, I knew in my heart that the things that were being promoted were anti-American, anti-Constitution of America. Uh, They were destroying our society. And what I didn't realize, though, until I got over to Hungary, I think my first trip was in 2019. I went over there to speak at a demographic summit. What I didn't realize, though, is that the woke agenda is very similar. The so-called progressive agenda that we're dealing with with is very similar to the communism that the Soviets have pushed since, you know, at least the early 1900s. If you look at the Bolshevik revolution, the things that the Bolsheviks were pushing, Sarah, were uh, legalized abortion as health care, uh, diversity between the classes, diversity between the races. We're doing the same thing now, except right. we've added diversity with the gender, uh, with genders, um, separating families, children from their parents, diminishing parental rights, uh, separating people from religion. All of these things and more are exactly from the playbook of communism. And I even went back to some old documents that were put out by our Department of Defense um, that I'll talk to you about a little bit more that describe the things that I'm saying and describe exactly what America is going through right now and what the Biden administration is pushing. I think that is so important that we reiterate, especially to... Uh, the younger audience to all of you out there who are listening right now, who may not know this because you either weren't taught this or it isn't a part of like your everyday life, but that you understand what Dr. Farrell is saying, because this is how communism works. It's, it's very underhanded. It comes in Mm -hmm. it sneaks in to a nation and it kind of, and and this was part of the Soviets uh, mission, wasn't it? They're part of their operation to target the West. Mm -hmm. And it's what China does as well. It's, it's a proxy war against us. It's like, while we're awake, we think we're just going to school, going to the job. They're infiltrating every level of our society. And part of that is the breakdown of the nuclear family. You just touched on that. Explain how important that is to basically be the disruptors of a nuclear family and, uh, and communities and societies. I mean, you have to break it down, right? You have to break it down because then you're in control. If you separate, if the government separates us from our faith, 
they become the faith. The, that's what the communists did. Their, uh, the Marxism, their tenants became the faith that people lived upon. If you separate children from parents, then you control the children. Um, you s separate people from their families, you control the people. So on and on. And you hit on something very important that's in my book, because I call this the new Cold War. Because what happened, part of what happened anyway, is that during that Bolshevik time uh, of the revolution, you know, and on from there, decades uh, coming coming from there, there was the Communist International or, or the Com Intern, which their main goal was to spread communism to the West. And a lot of people say, oh, that's not true. But actually, if you, you our Library of Congress says it's true. I right. found a lot of the documents on there about it. Um, so they have actually done what they said that they would do. And you just referred to this, Sarah, it's very insidious. People don't realize that their freedoms are being taken away. And as I, I say in last warning to the, to the West, um, it is, it's, it's like you, you go to bed and then you wake up and things have changed because you're not paying attention to it. And again, you hit on something very important. It's the propaganda. It's the psychological warfare. And actually, it's called communist psychological warfare. I found uh, documents that our Department of Defense had put out as lesson strategies for uh, employees of the Department of Defense. And they were outlined by this guy named Stephen T. Possany, outlined 11 points of the communist psychological warfare, how they were trying to get into our minds and change the West, what they were doing in the Soviet occupied countries. And guess what? All 11, 11 of them apply to us today. One is, is taking the media over. We see that has happened. Absolutely. I was just going to go there. Um, one of the most important facets of really, it's, I would believe, would be the media and education, right? And education. And that's something that um, even if, you, if, like with the book Unrestricted Warfare, you know, with China, Yes. Um, how the Chinese want their master plan basically to destroy America, which was discovered and it's been published and people can get that book too. But that, but it, they basically lay out the plan. Like this is what the yeah. Soviets did. This is what I believe it continues today. They just tell us like, we're going to destroy you and this is how we're going to yes. do it. And we've infiltrated your schools. And why do you think it is so hard for so many wow. Americans to believe that, to just accept what the enemy is saying is truth. Well, first of all, the goal of this communist psychological warfare is deception. And if you go back like to Sun Tzu, right, he, he said that deception was used by the enemy to control, and I'm paraphrasing, to control the people that they were trying to overtake. So if it's first based on deception, a lot of people, a lot of people don't see it, Sarah. You know, I, I'm a person of faith, so I read my Bible every day, and I the the truth is in front of me. You know, the Bible says that thy word is truth, right? So I have the truth in front right. of me every, every day, and I think less and less people are being taught fundamental values, truth from Judeo Christian principles. Uh, I think children are being taught being taught it less and less. So the other thing is I think it's convenient and it's easy to put your head in the sand and don't worry about it. But right. you know, when I came to DC, I actually came to work in international development. I traveled to the Middle East, to Africa, South America. Mainly what I was doing was helping women develop businesses. I also did research um, on the labor market, that kind of thing. But I quickly realized this was right at the end of Obama that my freedom was being taken away and I couldn't put my head in the sand anymore. It was never my goal to be a conservative uh, movement leader, never my goal. Uh, but like I said, you can't stand by and see your country being taken away. You can't, I mean, I guess you can, but you're going to lose your freedom. Well, you're not just going to lose it, but your family will lose it. Your generations to come will lose it. 
Um, and, and eventually, yes, you will lose it. And it can happen so quickly. You know, people think it takes, uh, you know, decades or 100 years for things to dissolve and fall apart. All we have to do is look at history to see that yeah. instantaneously entire civilizations have collapsed in on themselves. And that's a terrifying yes. thought. You know, I love the fact that you brought up that you're this, because you are, you're this amazing businesswoman. You're beautiful. You've traveled the world. You are strong and you stand up for women's rights. And, you know, and you also yes. see through all of the BS. You don't fall into Amen. the same categories. You don't, you know, I'm where you and I are not like sheep. We are not, we're not group think Amen, people. We think, sister. right. <laughs> but, right. But, but this is what's so incredible. Look at what's happened to Riley Gaines. You know, with yeah. her sports and, you know, swimming mm -hmm. and fighting against men participating in sports with her. Look at what's happened to her. She testified before Congress about the fact that people spit on her now, that they have doxxed her, that she has had to call the FBI, that she's had death threats. She's a young woman who just said, I do not want men competing against me in sports like i have Imagine. the right to to do that <laughs> to defend my my right as a woman Imagine. does that blow your mind does that blow your mind that oh, we've come so crazy. we've gone so backwards that we're like handing over our rights to men now like no you're a, yeah. oh you're a man that believes he's a woman of course you Please. are so here swim Please. against us <laughs> Please, Please wear the dress better than me yeah, please wear, let me open please. the door for you. Please um, take my scholarship, my track scholarship. You know, we're seeing right. this. And I worked for Concerned Women for America before I started Counterpoint Institute in Washington, D.C. And one of the main issues that I worked on was finding that gender identity language that was being put in legislation at the time because the conservatives and the Republicans were not clued in on this at that time. When was this? And when was this, Dr. Farrell? When was this? Okay. So I got to DC in 2016 and around that time I Look started volunteering for CWA. So 2016, 17, 18, 19, I, I guess. Um, and even the conservatives were like, oh, no, that'll never happen. You know, men will never compete with women. And I'm like, actually, it's already happening in schools all over the U.S. I mean, now it's like blown wide open. And like you said, people are offended at you if you say, um, excuse me, I, I don't want to lose my Title IX rights, please. Um, so, yeah. yes, we have Simple gone things so like far backwards. And and do you know the the real feminists and Feminist has become a bad word. That is also an example of the left, of the progressives taking words that mean one thing. Feminist just means you believe in equality between sexes. It doesn't mean, you know, you're a man hater. But the feminists before, leading up to the 1960s, do you know, like the vast majority of them did not believe abortion was uh they thought actually it took a woman's right away to, to life if you killed a, a female baby. So they didn't believe in abortion. The things that they were focused on was, you know, women being able to have a checking account like their husband and have control over money, being able to keep a job if they were pregnant. So it's morphed into this crazy being thing. Being able to vote. And, Simple you know, thing. Be be vote. Exactly. Yes, being able to vote. So now... We got to this point where we've, we've got like the Violence Against Women Act that's giving money to w women who are being violated in some way. And guess what? I, I know at least during Obama and uh, Trump was trying to turn it around, transgenders, men identifying as women, were also be, being given, given funds or allowed to use the facilities funded by this Violence Against Women Act. So yes, we're, so we were they in, they were in domestic shelters, right? So they were in domestic yes. shelters. Yeah. I mean, there's loss there were lawsuits about it because some some women would be like, I'm not I'm not doing this. I mean, imagine if you've just been beat the hell's been beaten out of you by a man. You've got some some problems, right? 
right. uh, about being in a, a bed or sharing locker facilities with a man who's in a skirt. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The gift giving season is upon us. And what a better way to spread joy than with the gift of comfort and good sleep. And I can tell you that my kids in my family all get my pillow sheets and towels when they moved out college. And now some of them married. I cannot think of a better gift. This is so great. They love it. And the comfort is amazing. This Christmas, my pillows, Mike Lindell has set some of the lowest prices on many of your my pillow favorites and for Sarah Carter listeners listen to this free shipping with code carter c a r t e r and that's extended through December 12th some of the savings listen to this 50% off my pillow 2.0 50% off six piece towel sets 50% off my mattress topper 2.0 original my slippers which are regularly 139.98 are now only 49.98 Slip on or moccasin style. Think about that. Don't know what to get them? Get them a gift card. They can pick it out themselves. Other items include bathrobes, blankets, mattresses, roll and go anywhere pillows, and Pika and Macy's favorite, the pet beds. So whether you are playing Santa for your loved ones or treating yourself, the time to save is now. Visit MyPillow.com slash Carter and enter code C-A-R-T-E-R at checkout to get free shipping on your entire order. Go to MyPillow.com slash Carter. That's MyPillow.com slash Carter. I was so blown away by how awesome Victor Orban was. And I, and I was so, mm-hmm. I think I had such, it was such a blessing to get a chance to meet him because I mm-hmm. remember people saying, well, oh, be careful with Victor Orban. I was like, why he's like a world (laughs) leader that that isn't afraid to say the truth that is standing up for his people that is actually makes more sense sadly we don't have a president that makes any sense right now we have a president that makes complete nonsense that's for sure that's like a whole new thing but um but we but but victor orban eloquently lays out the case for just standing on principle. I mean, which is where sure what we used to be. It used to be, I guess, I yes. guess we, we were a big concern in the past to these people. I mean, they don't want to see America, the same America. They want a completely different America. And, and so here's the thing, let me explain why uh, the whole point of the book, I, I didn't do that. So Victor Orban is fighting against the woke agenda of the European Union now, but they were also occupied by the Soviets from 46 to 91. And he was actually one of the freedom fighters that, you know, started the Fidesz party that is now going the conservative party and helped push the Soviets out of Hungary. And he himself says that our progressivism over here in the West is like communism. He's like, we we already lived through this. We don't want this anymore. And one of the things, uh, Sarah, when I was doing research for the book, so I did statistical research, historical research, but I also went and talked to senior government officials. I also went out into the countryside, talked to real people out there, and I kept getting Uh, the same thing from people that said the rhetoric coming out of the United States reminds them of the Soviet era. So that's sort of the whole point of Last Warning to the West is to explain their history, what they went through. But also, they, Sarah, they love their nation. You noticed that while you were there. Their national identity is so important to them. They don't want to destroy their society. And in the West right now, you know, we, we have this disdain for Western civilization. And uh, so in a nutshell, that's what the warning is about. I think that is a really good point. And I remember when I was in Hungary and I want to go back, I was telling my husband and the kids that we have to get back to Hungary. I'd like to be there when you're there just to just spend more time and and visit more places uh, because I, I just loved my trip there. But one of the interesting parts of the trip was um, visiting the museum of terror and going through that museum and the Museum of Terror, for all of you out there 
who don't know about it or who have not had an opportunity to be in it uh, was a reflection of what life was like and the horrors faced by people under communism and how neighbors right. would turn in neighbors and people would be subjected to the most cruel and unbelievable punishments that were so inhumane that even in these buildings where they were housed, you can still feel, literally feel that horror. Their spirit is somehow still lingering there. The torture, the cruelty, the pain. And I don't know, Dr. Farrell, are we the frog slowly boiling? Do we not really understand history anymore? Have the communists succeeded in basically brainwashing our youth and, you know, in our universities? I mean, we're seeing evidence of that everywhere. Yeah, I, I think that we're dangerously close to no return, Sarah, and I'm not an alarmist. I, w I wouldn't have said this except for what I know now. And the House of Terror that you're talking about, so your viewers understand, it was the Nazi Air Cross headquarters when they yeah, occupied that's right. Hungary in 1944. And then the Soviets came in 1945, and they occupied it as well with their secret police. And you are right. It is, you feel, you feel the oppression, you feel the sorrow. But when you walk out, you also feel the survival of the Hungarians because they know how to survive. And that is also what Last Warning to the West is about. But did you go down to the dungeon as well? Yes, I did. I spent time yeah. in that dungeon and yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to, because I wanted to understand and you're very, you're absolutely right. I should have brought up that it was, a, it started with the Nazis, ended with the Soviets there, but this is, you know, this is what I think are the audiences, especially the audience that is for me, like family that's listening to us right now, uh, understands is what started here in America even under COVID, we didn't ask many questions and people were right, willing to right. turn in their families to, and, yes. and to follow government without even, it was like uh, Senator Rand Paul said to me, without even hesitating for a moment to say, well, let's just make sure that this vaccine yeah. has passed the <laughs> snuff test. You know, it right. was like, nope. The government says you're going to kill your grandma. So if you don't abide by exactly what the government does, then I'm turning you in. Like all of a sudden people who never had power all of a sudden felt like they were powerful. They threw their masks on and they were marching around looking for non-mask wearers. I mean, I don't know how it wasn't it's blatantly true. obvious, obvious that we were Me turning either, into Sarah. something. And, and guess what? One of those communist psychological warfare points is the ones from the 1959-1960 that the government uses a crisis in order to take more control. Is that not what happened, Sarah? That is exactly, exactly. what happened. And this is a, connected to what you're saying. I want, I want your viewers to understand this, too, because the Nazis... It's basically what Nazi stands for in a nutshell is national socialism. The communists were also socialists. Both of them tortured people, political opponents in the basement of the House of Terror. Both of them. Uh, oh, and what's interesting as well is some of the people from the Aerocross party of the Nazis they just switched uniforms and moved right over to the Soviets, you know? So I want people, I have a chapter in Last Warning to the West that talks about this fascism, communism, both based on socialism. So we've, in the West, we've had this real hatred towards fascism. We should. Uh, but communism, socialism, uh, it's not so bad. They're both based on socialism. And at the ultimate foundation of both is the need to control people. How do you think Viktor Orban was able to convince, I don't think it would be hard, but to convince the people of Hungary, hey, I'm on your side. We need to move away from socialism. We need to stand up and speak out against the woke. And I noticed that in the people of Hungary. They love him. 
They love him. Yeah. They appear to, I'm, I'm in the streets. I, I was talking there. People were, there was no reason to worry about crime. I wasn't even thinking we were walking around at midnight. We were walking yeah. around at midnight, um, getting a coffee and just downtown without even a care in the world. Like people were everywhere. Kids were riding scooters. Um, what do you think convinced the people? Yeah, this is the road that we're going to take and we are not going to allow the criminals and the insane and the communists yeah. to run our country. Two things, you know, the communists didn't leave till 1991. So, you know, that was certainly in my lifetime. We won't say quite how far in my lifetime, right. but there are many, many, many people that lived through it, the communism. And, uh, you know, like I even had the privilege to interview uh, a man in, who was 86 and another in his 90s who were children when the communists came in. And they, they both told me separate times that they watched the communists rape women as a method of war, as we're seeing Hamas do right now to the Israelis. Uh, but then they lived through the decades of oppression. And I asked one man, uh, the 86 year old, what do you remember first that you thought when the Soviets left? And he said, freedom. I was free. I was free from fear. So there are so many people that still remember that. And that's the point, Sarah, too, of last warning to the West. I need Americans <laughs> to heed the warning that these people who have lived through their oppression and the lack of freedom, still remember it. Americans, we don't remember it. We've been free for 200 years, right? Uh, plus, right. plus, more than that. Um, and the other thing was when they first, the communists first left, the people that actually went to power were kind of reinvented communists. Oh, you know, they, they actually reinvented themselves to say, oh, we had been uh, freedom fighters, <laughs> but they were really the old communists. So they were elected, but then the people had enough of it because they plunged the country into debt. Uh, so that was one of the biggest things. And eventually Orban was elected for the first time. And then uh, someone else was elected elected after, but uh, Orban now has had four consecutive uh, victories as prime minister. So yes, they do love him. What about, what about this? What about the Biden administration just continuously going after okay. Viktor Orban and, you know, our, our democratic left targeting him? Do you think that a lot of that has to do with the fact that he's just not playing ball with the globalists, he's just kind of like, yeah, oh, yeah, you guys do your thing. We're going to do our thing. And thank you very much. But we don't need you. Totally, totally. <laughs> I mean, Orban has angered them like conservatives anger uh, Biden. Same thing, you know, because people have said to me, oh, no, the the media says that Orban's a dictator. And he's authoritarian. And I'm like, if, if it's a conservative, I say, well, what does the media say about you? Oh, that I'm a domestic terrorist. And I'm like, right. Is it true? No. Why don't you find out what the real facts are? So that's absolutely. The EU is very angry at him. But Sarah, you probably know this from being over there. Our ambassador, U.S. ambassador to Hungary, David Pressman, is over there antagonizing them on a daily basis on his social media and in many other ways. Um you know, yeah, it was like, this is weird because I want people to understand this. We have to explain. So Dave, just so, okay. because yeah, before you, because there's a couple of questions I need to get to with you, but I want all of you to understand what this ambassador is doing. You think of an ambassador being appointed to a country. Um, yes, of course, that ambassador is always considered like what the top chief collecting information um, and, and negotiating and talking with world leaders, but you don't think of an ambassador Diplomacy. being placed there. Yeah, diplomacy. You don't think of an ambassador being put there to be antagonistic. Well, this guy yeah. wins the award on that. He just is hyper focused on kids learning about sex education. He's he's gay. I don't think that matters, but he but but obviously I think that that was a consideration put in there. Um Absolutely. He, yeah, when they put him there and he's he has his husband there and children in, in Hungary, but his focus is literally on kind of this, you know, new age woke 
transgender, uh, school, uh, focused again, school yep. focused, you know, indoctrination yep. of people and, and the people of Hungary are like, nah, no, we don't want that. We don't need that. Right. We're good. We'll teach our kids the way we want to teach them. And I didn't see any problem. I, there were gay people in Hungary. I saw that, but it was like, it, it's like no big deal. It's like, like you said, it's like not overly, um, in your face. Like nobody cares. Right. Nobody cares. But if you listen to Ambassador Pressman uh, in the press and on his social media, you would think that uh, homosexuals are being beaten every day, Sarah. It's totally ridiculous. Um, so he, the Biden administration, is mad at Hungary for three main reasons. The first one is what you just brought up, that Hungary has said no to the EU. The EU wanted to put this gender ideology, transgender ideology into the curriculum um, and teach this to children. And overwhelmingly, Hungarians said no. They even did a, a referendum on it and took a vote. And they said no. So the Biden administration is angry about that. Pressman is angry about that. Um, the other thing that they're angry about is that they don't want Ill illegal immigration into their country. And what people forget is that during the Arab uprising, they were letting the hundreds of thousands of people go their, through their country as well. And then they finally had to declare a state of emergency. I mean, the EU wanted them to keep you know, bringing people in and their infrastructure couldn't handle it. You know, there are 10 million people. And I would like to pause and say, Sarah, I have been in the Ukrainian refugee center in Hungary uh, a year before last. No, last year it was. And they have taken in, according to the UN data, about 3.5 million Ukrainian refugees. Um, Many of them went through because they wanted to. Some of them settled in Hungary. Um, but even in the refugee center, they had like all these lines set up to take care of their children, to take care of their dogs and cats, <laughs> to send them on a, with a free bus ticket or a free train. I mean, ugh. you know, but if you listen again to Pressman, it's like they, they hate, they're Putin lovers. Literally, he has related Orban to Putin. So, and actually that's the third thing that uh, they're angry about is that uh, Orban would not uh, say yes to the sanctions against Russia. He eventually did, but he got a veto waiver from it. And the reason he wouldn't is not because he's in love with Putin. He, they have declared Ukrainian sovereignty. They stand for that, but they are reliant on Soviet, on, Soviet era infrastructure energy, they're reliant on Russian energy, just like all of Europe is, and it would have crushed their economy. That's absolutely true. It would have crushed their economy. And I know that that is a huge concern and actually a failure of U.S. policy in the past when it comes to dealing with Europe. And in fact, it was the yeah. Obama administration and it was Biden as well that built up Russia's power base. I mean, Vladimir Putin had looked for a long time to be the world leader in energy. And if anyone was to blame, right. I go back to, you know, Obama's policies with Russia. And, 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 yeah, and they right. built up the, the Putin power base. And I mean, we could do a whole podcast on that. Maybe we oh, will we one can. day because I think that's important, <laughs> okay. but this is interesting because before I let you go, you had a lot of people acknowledge your book, have put four words out, have said, yes, you got to get this book. You guys got to read this because it's a warning. It's not this is a warning to us, to each and every one of us, you guys. Dr. Farrell's done the hard work. We didn't have to go out into the fields of Hungary and interview, you know, people that are like were born during right before communism took over. She did. She did the hard work. She went out, collected the data. She interviewed world leaders. She is an advisor to many people. And she put it in a book so that we would be educated so we can make the right decisions at the ballot box here in America. And I know that's Amen. why you did it. You want to save our nation. You don't want us to Amen. be the frog slowly boiling, right? Amen. But T Tucker that Carlson. Is, yes, you hit the nail on the head. Let me tell you, that's why I wrote it. Carrie Lake uh, wrote the forward for my book. 
who uh, you and I both met at CPAC Hungary, such a lovely yeah. lady, uh, so kind and so strong for the conservative movement. I know she's been on your show. Um, yeah, Tucker and I'm going to see her tomorrow. I'm going to see her tomorrow. Well, day after tomorrow, I'll be oh, seeing her. Oh, well, I can't say where, but I will be fire. seeing her. I will. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so Tucker Carlson wrote a review for the book jacket. <clears throat> Lou Dobbs wrote a review for the book jacket. General Michael Flynn, Paul Gosar, uh, who we also saw at CPAC Hungary together and hung out with him. I, I have been so blessed with the endorsements on this book. That's what I should have let off with. But anyway, you got me so excited on the subject, Sarah. I have been so blessed for the support that I have on those, the book. And of course, the Center for fundamental rights that believed in me and published this book. Well, I know it's going to make a big difference. I'm so excited for you. Um, I can't wait to just have a chance to, to really hang out with you and, and talk with you. And like I said, me too. I can't wait to go to Hungary <laughs> with you. We need to do it again. We're going to do another, do another tour tour of Hungary um, uh, with See you, Dr. Hungary Farrell. Huh, I plan on it. See Good. I, oh, and, okay. and Sarah, it's a I deal. Say, say it's a deal. You? Just make sure yeah. everybody in Hungary it's still wants me there. Oh, they, well, not everybody, but the majority. And Sarah, can <laughs> yeah. I say that? The ambassador uh, doesn't. The book, well, we're not worried about him. Um, but the <laughs> book will be on Amazon December 7. Uh, so you can buy it there, the ebook and a paperback version. It's It's very inexpensive as well. Remember, folks, this is last warning to the West, last warning to the West, Hungary's triumph over communism and the woke agenda. You get that on Amazon. It's coming out. I'm so excited about that. Where can people follow you on social media? Oh, thank you, Sarah. First of all, go to counterpointinstitute.org. You can get all the handles there. Sign up for a newsletter, which only comes out like two or three times a month. And I'll have something about the book going out soon. Counterpointinstitute.org. Or on Twitter, I'm at Dr. Shea underscore DC. I'm also that on Instagram. And you can also find uh, Counterpoint Institute through my handles. Thanks so much, um, Shay, for being on the show today. You're a great friend and you're a great American and a great patriot. Your book is going to make a difference. Please make sure you subscribe to The Sarah Carter Show here on your favorite podcast app. It really does help. And leave that five stars on wherever you listen to your podcast and a review. I love to read your reviews. Um, and I take it to heart. So if you have something to say, say it. I love to read it. Leave that five stars. It makes a difference. Follow me on truth at Sarah Carter official on X at Sarah Carter DC and on Instagram at S Carter DC. God bless you. God bless our nation and God bless the great state of Texas. And for that matter, every state in our union, we're going to need it. <laughs>